Hello viewers, have you noticed that your car has recently started generating all the unusual noises for which you're certain they weren't there before? This is a clear warning sign of something being broken which, if left unchecked, may result in additional damage. But how to tell what's causing the problem and, more importantly, what needs to be done to fix it? Well, let's find out. Now, I must point out that modern engines are complex machines with dozens of moving parts, all of which can start rattling, squealing or banging at any given time. This is why it's not easy to figure out which of many components is to blame, but what helps is listening to when the weird noise appears and how it sounds. So, with that in mind, let's go through some common car noises, in no particular order. For a start, we have a strong tapping sound, as if someone is hammering inside the engine, that appears as soon as you start the car. Often it will quiet down after a few seconds, but sometimes it may be noticeable all the time. This, in most likelihood, will be hydraulic lifters, which are filled with engine oil to create sort of a soft, flexible link between the camshafts and the valves. But what can happen is that they stick and lose contact with the camshaft slope, resulting in the said tapping noise. Despite not being that damaging to the engine, this sound is annoying and there are several things you can try to fix it. One is to check the oil level. If it's low, this might cause a lifter tick, among other issues. Replacing the oil and even considering a different oil grade is another option here. Perhaps what you have is too thin for the application. Also, if your car has been poorly maintained in the past and there is a lot of sludge inside the engine, performing an engine flush might do the trick. Another thing you might hear right after starting the engine is a high-pitched squealing noise, which usually quickly disappears but may also reappear during hard accelerations. The cause for this is almost definitely a worn auxiliary belt that drives the alternator, power steering pump, AC compressor and so on. The only way to solve the problem is by replacing the belt, a job that you can very well do on your own with a ratchet and suitable sockets. Just remember how the belt was routed or even better, take a photo of the old one before removing it. Sometimes, however, the squealing noise may be present even after this is done, which probably means one or more pulleys and their bearings are damaged and need to be replaced. Again, not a hard job and you can do it yourself. Then we have annoying rattles coming from the engine bay or underneath the car, most prominently at certain revs, either during accelerations or while slowing down. Despite sounding quite nasty, this noise is usually caused by a loose exhaust heat shield. This basically is a piece of metal placed between the hot exhaust components, such as the manifold or the catalytic converter, and the car's body to protect it from high temperatures. But what happens is that the bolts holding the shield in place rust and fall off, causing it to rattle because of engine vibrations. What you can do here is inspect all heat shields and their retaining bolts and, if any of them are missing, put in new ones. The challenge here, of course, might be old rusted bolts, or what's left of them, which can be difficult to remove. While on the subject of exhaust, I must mention that any leaks here, between the engine and the tailpipe, will cause the car to run louder than normal, especially during hard accelerations. Basically, what you're hearing is exhaust gases escaping through a crack before they've reached the muffler. Besides sounding nasty, this can also be dangerous because these toxic fumes may get into the cabin through the car's ventilation. The most common places where the cracks appear include the exhaust manifold and the gaskets between the downpipes, converters and mufflers. You can find the leak by looking for black traces of soot or, if that doesn't help, by clogging up the tailpipe with a rug while the engine is running and trying to spot where the fumes are getting out. Now, moving along to a more sinister sound of deep knock that comes from the engine itself, but usually only when it warms up to the operating temperature. The source of this can be two things, and one of them is the infamous rod knock, which is caused by bad corn rod bearings. Unfortunately, if that's the case, there's pretty much nothing you can do about it apart from taking the car to a professional mechanic for an engine overhaul. Another possibility is something called pinging or predetonation, 
where the air-fuel mixture inside the cylinders ignites on its own before the plug generates a spark. But what's specific here is that this only happens under hard loads when you're pressing the throttle and stops soon after you ease off it. This can be caused by wrong spark plugs, stuck EGR valve or even fuel whose octane number isn't high enough and it's very damaging to the engine so you mustn't ignore it. Similarly, if you hear a metallic rattle for a brief moment after starting the car, that might be a loose timing chain. That's of course assuming the engine has it instead of the timing belt. Basically what happens here is that the timing chain stretches and loses tension, which then causes it to rattle briefly upon startup. If left unchecked, this can lead to a catastrophic engine failure, all of which you can find out in one of our previous videos on that subject. Next, we have hissing sounds that might be coming from under the hood. In all fairness, you probably won't hear these while driving, as they aren't very loud, but only, for instance, when doing something around the engine while it's idling. The likely cause for this is the intake vacuum leaks between the filter box and the intake manifold, to which the engine draws unmetered air. This, if substantial enough, will offset the air-fuel mixture, causing the car to run rough on idle and low revs. Tracking down where the leak is coming from can sometimes be difficult if the engine bay is cramped, and what helps here is hooking up a smoke generating machine onto the intake. Similarly, if you have a turbocharged car, there might be a crack in the intercooler or the connecting hoses, to which a portion of compressed air will escape under boost. Apart from a whistling noise, this will also affect the engine's power output, which will be most noticeable during accelerations. Like with vacuum leaks, finding where the crack is may be difficult because of the intercooler's often awkward position behind the bumper. In the end, I must mention loud pops and bangs coming from the back of the car when you lift your foot off the throttle. This is probably coming from the tailpipe and it's caused by the engine running rich, with the unburned fuel exploding once it gets inside the hot exhaust. One of the telltale signs confirming this is the case is a strong smell of gas when the car is idling, but you can additionally verify by hooking up the diagnostic tool and checking the fuel trims, which can be found in the live data section. Now you're probably wondering how dangerous it might be to drive a car whose engine makes weird noises. Well, that depends a lot on the situations. Noisy tappets won't do much harm, but ignoring knocks and rattles coming from the engine's internals isn't a good idea, even in the short run. In general, any odd noises should be considered as early warning signs that call for immediate attention. If you're unable to figure out what's causing the problem, take your car to a trusted workshop, whose technicians should be skilled and experienced enough to pinpoint the exact culprit. So that would be all about the noises the engine could make while running. I hope this video helped you identify the one you're hearing and if so, don't forget to hit that like button and share it with your friends. But if not, consider taking your car to a professional mechanic or if you want to learn more about how cars work and dive deeper into the problem, check out other videos here or visit our site mechanicbase.com where you'll find all sorts of automotive repair guides. Bye!